Today I'm going to go over the best dog build for Alien Fireteam Elite and we're going to start right now. What's up guys, Reckless here and welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to tell you guys what I feel is the best dock build for Aliens Fireteam Elite. And if you guys want to see more Aliens Fireteam Elite content in the form of class builds, experience farming, official and fan mail lore, news updates and more, be sure to subscribe down below and turn on notifications so you never miss out on any video. Okay, so if you guys are interested in a technician build, I actually made a video on that as well, and you guys can check it out in a card on the top right of the screen right now, or at the end of this video. Prior to patch 1.01.89542, Jesus, that was a mouthful. <laughs> That's what she said. Anyway, that was released on September 23rd, and playing as a doc in Aliens Fireteam Elite prior to that date was a terrible decision especially on extreme and insane difficulties. Most players just played the class to level it up to level eight and just moved on to a different class for the end game. Now, since the patch was released, the doc is actually a good viable character in the end game due to its rework in its kit. Now, the trauma station ability regens energy when any player picks up an aid kit. However, if your team has more than one doc, then the energy is actually split between them. Before this update, the trauma station only regained energy while the doc picked up an aid kit, which was a terrible idea to start this game off with. I'm definitely glad that the devs had changed this. Also, the painkiller station and the suppression station can now be placed down when the trauma station is out of energy. And this makes it easier so you can actually use their abilities even when the trauma station doesn't have energy. This is actually really big for this build, and we'll get into why. But before we get into the dock build, let's take a look at the class itself. The dock is a mid to long range class that uses rifles and handguns. Its two abilities are Trauma Station, which deploys a trauma station in front of you that heals nearby allies, has a limited supply of healing, can be picked up and redeployed. The second ability is called Combat Stims, which increase accuracy and stability by 50%, stamina regen by 30%, and movement speed by 15% for you and your allies. Accompanied to these abilities is the class perk called Field Medic, which your ability recharge speed is increased by 15% for each nearby ally. Also, picking up an aid kit restores a portion of your trauma station's energy. The Doc is indeed a support class, so you won't be seeing much damage coming out of it like you would in a Gunner, Technician, or Demolisher, but with all of the debuffs, you will be dishing out a good amount of damage. Let's go ahead and jump into the weapons. Real quick, all of these weapons I go over are maxed out in order to get the highest benefit out of each weapon. Now when it comes to the weapons, you can actually use any type of weapon that fits your playstyle. Personally, when it comes to the dock class, I like using the Twilight V4. As for the mods, I use Tanker Muzzle Break, which gives me a plus 20% in weak point damage, a plus 10% in stumble chance, as well as effective range. And overall, this gives me 33% chance to briefly stun enemies on hit. This effect can only occur once every 15 seconds. Then we also have Armor Piercing Rounds. And this is a large magazine, which gives me plus 30% magazine capacity, as well as plus 25% damage against armor targets. And then we also have digital scope, which gives me plus 20% in accuracy, as well as handling, as well as plus 15% in weak point damage, as well as a 10% in my mo uh, zoom modification. For the perks, the first two tiers give me plus five stability. And then on the third tier gives me plus five fire rate. As for the fourth tier, we get plus 5% handling, an additional 1% weak point damage on weak point hit for three seconds, and this effect does stack. Now, if you wanted to use another type of weapon, I highly recommend that you use the L33 Pike. <laughs> I'm joking, do not use that weapon. That weapon is terrible. Go ahead and use the M42 A3 sniper rifle. Now, you may not like sniper rifles but this sniper rifle is a beast and i would definitely go ahead and use the same mods that i am using currently 
on the Twilight V4 on the M42A3 sniper rifle. As for our handgun, now I like using the Type 95 combat pistol. With this, for the mods, I use the Vented Flash Hider, which gives me a plus 25% in weak point damage, as well as a plus 5% range on hit for three seconds. This effect can stack up to five times. Then we also have Drop Magazine, which gives me a plus 30% on reload speed, as well as a plus 20% on magazine capacity. And then last but not least for the mods, we have the hybrid sight. And this gives me a plus 30% on accuracy and a plus 20% on weak point damage. As for the perks, uh, the first and second tier give me plus 5% stability. The third tier gives me plus 5% fire rate. And then the fourth tier gives me 1% uh, fire rate and stability on shot. This effect stacks up to five times and resets on reload. Now, if you wanted to go ahead and use a different type of weapon instead of the Type 95 combat pistol, I highly, highly recommend using the Kramer uh, 50 cal Magnum. It is a beautiful handgun. I will say that I've tried both and I do like both. However, I like certain types of weapons when it comes to certain types of classes. I will say this, please. Do me and yourself a favor and stay away from the N79 EVA laser. Do not use this. This is trash and I don't even know why it even came to the game. As for the abilities, we'll be going over that once we go over the class tree. However, when it comes to the consumables, we will be using the hardened incinerary sentry gun, which is an armor turret program to detect and eliminate foes carries magnesium rounds that have a chance of setting the target on fire. When its magazine is exhausted, the sentry gun will self-destruct. And then we also use the hardened electroshock sentry gun, which is an armored turret program to detect and eliminate foes, carries piezoelectric rounds that have a chance of stunning the target. When its magazine is exhausted, the sentry gun will self-destruct. Now. I use the sentry guns because most of my team actually carries the cryo grid as well as the static grid. So me being the weaker class when it comes to damage, this helps you out dish a little bit more damage out when it comes to actually um, fighting Xenos. Next, let's go ahead and get into the dock grid. We will be starting on the left hand side and working our way to the right. So first off, we have the trauma station. And as I had said earlier on in the video, it deploys a trauma station in front of you that heals nearby allies, has a limited supply of healing, and can be picked up and redeployed. With the trauma station, we are coupling that with suppression station, which your trauma station now has a larger radius and debuffs enemies who step into it, reducing their movement speed and damage dealt. This is going to be huge when you are playing on those harder difficulties like Extreme as well as Insane. Now, it does debuff them, making their movement speed uh, slower as well as uh, the damage that they deal. However, we are going to enhance this even more with Enhanced Reach 4, which increases the radius of an ability by 22% and going to enhance it even more with Peace of Mind which increases the radius of trauma station by 20%. In turn, this gives us a nice 42% of this trauma station. And that is a very, very big circle that you are going into. Next is field medic, which is for each nearby ally. Your ability recharge speed is increased by 15%. Picking up an aid kit restores a portion of your trauma station's energy. And the only thing we are going to attach to this is support system, which your outgoing healing is increased by 20% and allies now gain 15% ability recharge speed while standing near you. As a doc, I feel like it is very important that you use these next five in any doc build. First being Bedside Manor, which you can pick up down allies twice as fast and your entire team's bleed out time is increased by 25%. Next. We have Rapid Recovery, which picking up a down ally grants them 50% more health and your entire team's bleed out time is increased by another 25%. Then we have Surgeon's Hands, which 
you can no longer be stumbled while interacting with objects, reviving allies, or using an aid kit. Coming up to the top, we have Anesthesiologist, which after not taking damage for at least 10 seconds, gain 10% of your current life as temp health. This is huge as a doc because gaining extra health is going to keep you alive. And if you stay alive, your team stays alive. Next, we have Neurotoxin Specialist, which dealing damage to an enemy weakens them, causing them to deal 20% less damage for five seconds. And this does not stack. Then coming over to the right hand side, Combat Stims, which increases accuracy and stability by 50%, stamina regen by 30%, and movement speed by 15% for you and your nearby allies. Then we have Extended Duration 3, which increases the duration of an ability by 18%. And then next to Extended Duration, we have Overdose, which the cooldown time of Combat Stims is doubled, but its effects are twice as powerful and last 50% longer. And then we have Migraine Solution, which headshot kills reduce the cooldown of Combat Stims by one second. Now, I will say this, if you are ever going to use Overdose, you need to couple it with Migraine Solution in order to help bring that time of your cooldown down. Otherwise, I wouldn't run Overdose at all, but coupling these two together is beautiful. Or something that helps you regen your Combat Stims faster is definitely going to be a plus with your dock build. And then the final perk is readiness, which your movement and ability recharge speeds are increased by 10% and your reload speed and handling are increased by 20%. Now, because of suppression station actually being able to debuff the enemy and slowing their movement down, as well as the damage they deal, that is why we are actually using the turrets instead of anything like a cryo grid or a static grid. So. This helps you do a little bit more damage. However, if you are going to use this type of build, you want to make sure that your teammates are actually using those static grids and those cryo grids on those harder difficulties because it is imperative that you slow down the enemy as much as possible. And the same concept goes into when you are playing horde mode. Slowing the enemy down is a must. So that rounds out the build for the dot class. I will keep you guys up to date in the event that we get any changes to the class and I will make another video detailing those changes. Let me know what you guys think about the build and if you would make any changes to it yourself. Also, tell me in the comment section below which class you want to see the next build on, whether it be a gunner, demolisher, recon, or the phalanx. When all of the videos for all of the classes are made, I will put all of them in the description of each video. That way it'll make things easier for you when you are looking for a build for a different class. And that my friends brings us to the end of the video. If you like the Alien Universe, come join the Everything Xenomorph Discord. Everyone is welcome. You can make new friends, LFG in games like Alien Fire Team Leap on Extreme or Insane, talk about the movies, show off your art, cosplay, or collectibles, we have a little over 115 members and we continue to grow each day. A link to the Discord will be in the description box below and I will see you guys in the next one. Hey, hey you, watch these videos too. I know you like them. Go, 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 go.